Today we are going to be learning about colored mixing with colored grays. So um, we've done lots and lots of color mixing in the past. In first or second grade um, you learned about monochromatic colors where we kind of took white and black and made a gray scale adding a little bit of black into our white. Um, in first or second grade, depending on which one it was, uh, you learned about mixing secondary colors, taking the two primaries and mixing t them together um, to get the secondary colors. And in third grade, you learned about mixing uh, intermediate colors, where you were mixing the colors in between a primary and secondary color. So you're mixing something like red-orange or yellow-orange in between that. And now what we're going to be learning about is learning mix grays or colored grays. So for example, here's our color mixing chart. This is what it's going to look like this year. Um, and it's pretty complicated, but it's kind of the last step into becoming a good painter. And the idea is that uh, it's basically complementary color mixing. So as you all know, if we look at the color wheel here, we've got red and green and they're across the color wheel from each other. They're complementary colors. Just like orange and blue are complementary colors and they're across the color wheel from each other. Okay, likewise yellow and violet or yellow and purple are right across the color wheel from each other and they're complementary colors. You can also think of complementary colors like the blue green and the red orange. They're across the color wheel, but we talk less about them because those are less common mixing arrangements and we talk mostly about primary and secondary color mixing. So today we're going to start with red and green. Now when you mix two complementary colors together, what do you think happens? Okay, the colors neutralize each other or they dull each other out. So if we take red, here's our red color, and we add red to our green, we get this brownish neutralized color. Likewise, if we take yellow here and we add it to our violet, we get a different kind of brown neutralized color. And finally, if we take our blue and we mix it with our orange, we get another brownish neutralized color. Now these neutralized colors might look kind of brown and dull and boring, but what happens is all of those neutralized colors in your painting will make the pure colors stand out and look really nice. So this is what our neutralized color mixing chart looks like before we get started, and this is what it will look like after we are done you'll see that on either side I've got the complementary colors organized red and green, magenta and green, orange and blue, orange and turquoise, that's the lighter blue, and yellow and violet. And what you're doing is you're mixing these complements to get a neutral gray right in the center. And it says right here neutral. Okay, it's 50-50 of the color mixing. So with our color mixing chart, you're going to start, number one, first things first, by putting your name. Why do we put your name? Because hopefully these will all look the same when you're done because it's kind of a right wrong answer kind of thing. So everyone should look the same when we're done and therefore you want to put your name on so we know who it belongs to. And let's pretend that this is Mr. D. Young's class. Okay, put your teacher's name, um, Young G, sorry. Um, put your teacher's name right there so we know what class you belong to as well. Okay, so if this is our color mixing chart, we need to start with our two um, colors. We're going to start with red. If I can get the bottle open. There we go. Start with a little red on our palette. And start with a little green on our palette. Okay, and as we mix these together, you'll see how they go now. Right before we get to the color mixing section here, we're going to talk about our supplies. We should have a palette underneath here and our palette paper on top. We should have a cup of clean fresh water and a cup empty for our dirty water later. A little bitty cup for our color mixing and washing our brush out when we need to. And we should have a paper towel to blot our brush. And we need obviously a brush. In the past, you've used mostly this kind of brush which is a watercolor brush actually and today you're going to be using an easel brush um, as in fifth grade we're going to be using these easel brushes for our easel brush paintings which is temper painting okay and this one is a half inch easel brush because this size here is a half an inch and this one's a quarter inch easel brush because the size of it is a quarter inch okay and we're going to use our quarter inch easel brush because it kind of fits right inside of that little square that we need to paint in today, or rather rectangle, excuse me. So as you start your color mixing, you're going to always start on the right hand side and mix 
to the left because these are your weaker colors. Red, orange, and yellow are the weaker colors as opposed to green, blue, and violet. Okay, so I'm going to take my red and I'm going to get some pure red on my brush. And remember, this is tempera painting. It's easel painting. So we want thick, rich paint. We don't want just watery watercolor paint. Okay, so there's my first one. I put red, it says 100% red. The next one, you're gonna take a bunch of your red, put it into the middle here, and I'm gonna mix a little bit of green. I'm just gonna get a pin prick of green, and I'm gonna add it into my red. I'm gonna mix it thoroughly so it changes color. You can kinda see there that it changed a little bit darker than it was. And you're gonna mix that nice and thoroughly on your palette so it's an even color change. And you're gonna paint that into the next square. Okay, it might not look too different, it might look a little different, and that's the idea. It should be about 85% red, 15% green. About. It doesn't have to be a perfect, that's kind of an estimation. The next one, I'm going to get another little pin prick of green here, add it in, and it should start getting a little darker. Okay, and I'm going to add that in, mix it thoroughly, okay, and paint that into the next one where it says red. 75%, green 25%, and you can see that it's getting a little bit darker. Okay, I'm going to kind of squish the paint out of my bristles there by rotating it around and get some more green and add it in. Okay, and this point it's getting a little bit darker, which is what we want. Okay, it's almost neutralized at this point. I'm going to paint this one in here. Okay, and you can see that it's getting a little bit darker. And each time we go, it should get a little bit darker and a little bit darker. There's my more green. I want to have a lot of green in there, so it really is a deep neutralized brownish color now. Okay, and we're going to get to the green side next. And every time you add more, it should get darker and darker until it makes a change to becoming more green. Okay, and this one I'd say is about as neutral as we can get. It's pretty brownish color okay and it's very dark because I haven't added white yet which is the next line with white here but I'm gonna grab some more green add it in and you'll see now that this color turns out to be dark but it's actually a little more on the green side it's got a little greenish tint more than that one does so I'm gonna add a little bit more green in now okay and this one is really getting green Okay, add a little more green in here. And this one you'll see is very green. And now at this point it says pure green. Okay, I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to just kind of squish as much of the paint off as I can. I'm going to get some pure green and paint it in my pure green part there. So that's kind of our neutralized first row, just the red and green. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing, but we're going to use some white. And that's going to brighten it up and it's really going to show our colors a little better as far as what we've got for our color mixes. And you can kind of see right here um, my first color line that I mixed before, similar to what I've got. And this one I'm going to add white so we get a little white in there. So first things first, I can probably get away with using this palette again because it's pretty clean. So I'm going to take some white and squish it on here, a larger pile of it, and I'm going to add some red in. Now at this point, I'm going to take my brush and wash my brush out really well because I don't want any of that green that's in stuck in the bristles of my brush to contaminate my new color mixing. There we go. If I blot my brush, you can see it's nice and clean. There's nothing in there now. And I'm going to take some red over here and I'm going to mix some pink because red with white is pink, right? We learned that in first grade with our um, tints and shades color mixing that red plus white equals pink, right? Okay, so here we go. Here's a nice big pile of pink, okay? Here's my big pile of pink, mixed nicely, mixed thoroughly, and I'm going to put that into my white section here. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm going to take, same as I did with the first line, I'm just going to take a little bit of green and add it in. 
Okay, you can see it changes it ever so slightly. Little darker, little more neutralized. And now that I put it down on the page, you can see the difference there. It's just a little bit neutralized. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more green. Ooh, that's way too much. And add that in. And this will further neutralize it. It's kind of turning into a dull pinkish color. And one of the things that turns out about master painters is that master painters are really masters at painting neutral colors. If you look at any painting that's really truly amazing, where the color really sings, 90% of it is neutralized colors. And the rest, 10%, is, you know, more pure colors. Okay, so here we go. I'm moving maybe a little too slowly on the uh, neutralize. I could probably add more in to get it to neutralize a little quicker. And everyone's is going to look slightly different, but there should be a, a perceptible difference between each little swath of color that you put in there. And here's my neutralized gray. It's pretty brownish, light brownish gray, um, pretty close to what you should have. I'm going to add some more green in to change it even more green. And at this point, you can really kind of see the greenish nature of my color here. If I paint it in this next little section, you'll see that it's getting to the green side, the green side of life. Add some more green in. If I add a little more green into the next section. Now I'm going to take my brush, squish as much of the paint out as I can by squishing and rotating it on my paper towel. I'm going to take some of this pure white, mix a little green into it so we got a nice lime green, or not lime green, uh, peppermint green color and paint that into my green with white right here so we have a nice finished section. Now once you've finished this you're going to come up to Mr. Longer and you're going to check with me make sure that everything looks nice and neat and then you'll carry on with the rest of your color mixing. If this is our uh, to-do list today, you're going to get your supplies, you're going to mix your red plus green color chart, which is the first one, show Mr. Lundgren, so I can check that you're doing it right so you don't, you know, screw up and do all the rest of them wrong. I want to um, check you before you get too far. Then continue your color mixing. When you're completed with your entire color chart, check again with Mr. Lundgren so I can uh, mark it in my grade book. Then clean up all your supplies and put your chart in the drying rack. Okay, so that's our... Uh, our lesson for today. I expect everyone to get at least this far, if not farther. I have the next color mixing um, demonstrations made up, so if people are getting confused and they want to do the magenta plus green, same exact procedure as the red plus green. Magenta plus green, same thing, just using magenta instead of red. Orange, blue, same thing. You're using orange and blue and doing the same procedure that you did with the red and green. Okay, just doing the same thing over and over. Once you're done each time, make sure you do a good job of washing out your brush. Because if you don't wash your brush out well, your colors are not going to turn out right. They're going to get muddied. They're going to be mixed up with more than one complementary mix. If I have red and green on my brush left over and I start mixing orange, that orange is never going to look right. Okay, so make sure you do a good job washing out your brush. At the end of class, wash these brushes out really well and put them in the proper container over on the counter. And that concludes our color mixing of colored grays.